These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. So your homework for this week is on fluids and pressure. So to start with the concept of pressure, the symbol for pressure is a P. Maybe lowercase p is what we'll use. The formula that defines the pressure is the force over the area. Pressure is force over area. We always have to decide whether each concept is a vector or a scalar. And it turns out that pressure is a scalar. That's worth making a note of. You might think that it was a vector because it's based on force. But maybe I'll put a dot in here to show you know, that we like to use dots to indicate magnitudes. The pressure only depends on the magnitude of the, of the force, which is the scalar component of the force. What this means is that the pressure doesn't have a direction. We don't report the direction as part of the pressure. It's a scalar. We need to know what our basic units are for pressure. Well, the SI unit for pressure is the Pascal. And as usual, each new unit has to be memorized. So this should be added to hopefully have a long list of the units that we've seen so far. And this should be added to that list of units that we need to memorize for the course. But we should also be able to figure out what the component units are for a Pascal by looking at this formula here. Well, do you remember what the units are for force? Newtons. And trickier, I don't know, do you remember what are the, unit, the standard units for area? Meters squared. Okay, that's good. That's right. After all, what are the standard units for distance? Meters. And an area is just a length times a width, so that would be meters squared. After all, what are the standard units for volume? Meters cubed. Meters cubed. Not liters, but in the SI units are square meters. So Pascal is newtons per square meter. Let's see if we can interpret what this means. Well, we should also know how to convert Pascals into other units. For example, these are, these are not the units that people would kind of use in chemistry in ordinary life. In ordinary life, people usually use atmospheres, where one atmosphere is just the ordinary pressure that we're feeling right now. One atmosphere is the pressure that you would just feel from the atmosphere that's above you. And do you have your textbook with you? Yes, yeah, so let's figure out how many pascals there are in an atmosphere. That should be in our inside front cover. Oh, that was fast. Oh, that's, that? pascals, that's right. So. Times um, 10 to the third. Right, but we want to put that in standard units. So, or, I mean, in standard scientific notation. So, in standard scientific notation, I think that would come out to be 1.01 times 10 to the fifth. It's too bad they don't have that in Pascal's under cover. I would actually add that to your cover for reference, that one atmosphere is 1.01 times 10 to the fifth Pascal's. It's true that a lot of the time we use kilopascal's, but those are not the SI units. And what is one atmosphere? That's just the ordinary pressure that you feel from the atmosphere that's above you, from the weight of all the air that's above us. Now let's think about what this means. Remember, what is a Pascal? It's Newtons per square meter. Well, how can we interpret this? 
I, I think we've seen this trick in the past that it's useful to put a number in front of all the units. What number can we put on the bottom of this fraction without changing the fraction? One. One. So what this really means is, let's say that on the floor I drew a one square meter box. Let's say I drew a one square meter box on the floor. Well, on top of that one square meter box, there's lots and lots of atmosphere. There's all the weight of all the air in the atmosphere above that. And how much does all that atmosphere weigh? Well, it turns out that it weighs 1.01 times 10 to the fifth newtons. That's the total weight of the atmosphere above one square meter on the floor. So that's the way to interpret the pressure. The pressure tells you what the total force is that's being applied above one square meter. It tells you the total force that's being applied over one square meter. Suppose that I drew a two square meter box. If I drew a two square meter box, what would be the force of the atmosphere on that box? It would be double. That would be 2.02 times 10 to the fifth newtons. If one square meter feels this much force, then twice as much area should feel twice as much force. That should make sense. The bigger the square is, the more atmosphere there is on top of it. So the more force it's going to feel, the more weight it's feeling from that atmosphere. The pressure only tells us the force on one square meter. How about if I drew a three square meter box, how could we figure out what the force was on that? 3.03 times 10 to the fifth newtons. So at first it might seem like it's not very useful to know what the force is on a single square meter, because how, how do we know that we're just dealing with one square meter? But the point is, if you know what the force would be on one square meter, you can easily figure out what the force is on any area. You can see what we're basically doing is just doing a unit conversion. If you know this is the pressure, and then you cancel out the meters here, you would be able to figure out that the force is just three times this. Or another way of seeing this is, what would you get if you solve this equation for force? If you solve this equation for force, how do you find the force? Uh, multiply the pressure by the area. Which is really what we've been doing here just by looking at the units. So either by looking at the units or by looking at the equation, we can see that we find the force as the pressure times the area. If the pressure tells you what the force would be on one square meter, but you're really dealing with four square meters, then you should multiply by four to find the total force. Well, this is important because uh, usually on the exam, it would be too easy if they just give you F and A. Usually they don't just have you plug in directly here. Instead, they, might, they will give you the P and the A, P in the area, and make you find the force. Well, now we see we can find the force either by just looking at the units or by rearranging this equation to see that the force is the pressure times the area. One thing that oftentimes prevents people from doing that, though, is a lot of students get confused and they forget that pressure and force are different things because the word pressure kind of sounds like the word force. So a lot of people would say, oh, the force is 1.01 times 10 to the fifth. But this is not the force, it's the pressure. The force is the pressure times the area. So the force and the pressure are not the same exact thing, is the point that I'm trying to make, even though unfortunately the words that were chosen for those sound kind of similar. But in physics, they have different definitions. Force and pressure are two different things. Pressure is in pascals, and force is in newtons. Or you might say, the pressure is in newtons per square meter, and the force is just in newtons. So a very common exam question is for you to be given the pressure and asked to find the force. Well, you can't do that unless you realize the force is different from the pressure. It's the pressure times the area. Now, another important concept is the gauge pressure. This is a very simple concept, but students seem to find this very confusing. And this is a popular topic, so we want to make sure we understand what the gauge pressure means. The gauge pressure is just the actual pressure minus the atmospheric pressure. Gauge pressure is just the actual pressure minus the atmospheric pressure. So we can use P for the actual total pressure. And then this would be the gauge pressure and the atmospheric pressure. The gauge pressure is just how much extra pressure we have above the normal atmospheric pressure. The gauge pressure is just how much extra pressure we have above the normal atmospheric pressure. 